everybody. Good evening from Berlin and good evening to Melbourne and good evening to Salzburg. Hi guys, how are you all doing today? Good evening. Hi. Yes, we're all good. Thank you. Another great morning. <laughs> Another great morning. You know what, everyone? It's April Fool's Day in Australia. It's now, what time is it, Tim? 7 a.m.? 7 a.m., yeah. <laughs> so when you sent me a text about 45 minutes ago saying, okay, I'm up. And I said, yeah, but there's no hangout today. <laughs> And I believe I was, I didn't know what to believe. Yeah, but at least you didn't go back to bed. <laughs> I stayed awake just in case, yeah. I know, that's really mean. And happy to see all of you online. There's, I'm, I'm blown away every time at how many of you are watching and from where you're watching from. But really, really happy to, happy to welcome you two to the Horn Hangouts, Dinka and Radovan. Um, it's so great to see you. And if from your house in Salzburg, how are you guys doing? We're wonderful, thank you. Pleasure to be with you again. Thanks. Dinka, did you recover? Did you recover from the party? <laughs> Absolutely. Radan was never ever so long at home. So this is a really special occasion. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, huh? Do you, are you going to give us some advice, Dinka, on how t how marriages can survive uh, the time of Corona? Just leave the house first. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's something just, really, uh, really get to know each other again. That's that's uh, yeah, interesting. Well, you're sitting very close, so it must be going OK. <laughs> so far, reconnect and strengthen. Yes. Thank you for wearing your T-shirts. I'm I feel very, very honored. <laughs> um, Tim, how are we doing? Is the is the audio OK? Can everyone hear us OK? Let audio. Us know. Audio is good, and I think we're streaming really well so far. It's a okay, good morning. Good. We're streaming also to Facebook Live. Hi, everyone on Facebook. Great to see you. Write in and tell us where you're watching from. And um, it would be great if you have any juicy questions for Radovan. Pop over to the website because I've got the, the chat from the website, and they're much easier for me to see than right now. I, on Facebook, it's here on my left. I can see I can, I can can see handsome Tim right now on the bill. Oh, yeah. And um, we've got everyone, we've got Korea, we've got all sorts of, oh, for my good, Eric Rowski's watching. Hey, Eric, nice to see you. Um, good morning, or a good afternoon. What time is it there? Afternoon. Um, but here on the website, Radovan, we've got some questions for you. But first, I've got some questions for you. What have you been doing all day? Well, I've spent the whole afternoon teaching and uh, it's a new kind of challenge. It's going actually very well. And I've discovered that, um, new aspects of playing and teaching are necessary. And I think we'll all learn from this experience and I want to keep it a habit because uh, I used to travel a lot, so I don't know whether, when and where, when it's gonna happen again, but I'd like to keep them in touch with my students on a more regular basis. So I think we're gonna be using more of this anyhow. Um, certain things work very well and other things work less well. You know, you can, uh, um, we can't talk a lot about sound quality, things like that, but uh, we're going to, to uh, try and cover as much repertoire and new things, so new challenges and, uh, um, and stay motivated. Yeah. What are, your, what are you using? Stefan Dor was asking yesterday on the Hangouts for some, some online teaching tips with the equipment and stuff like that. How do you, how do you go about it? Well, the different schools where I teach have been proposing different uh, uh, platforms for this, but I started teaching on Skype and that seems to work quite well. So I stuck with that, although we're on Zoom today, which I want to try also for teaching perhaps. And there are some others uh, like um, what's called Microsoft Teams and something our school in Spain has been using that one. So I'm happy to try different things out. but. Uh, the sound quality is unfortunately not going to be great, but there are other things that are there. Yeah. I'm trying to be more expressive on camera, <laughs> say what I feel and what I think and so on. So. <laughs> <laughs> and do you use an extra microphone or what do you do? No, I don't. I just use the one built into the laptop and uh, one of my students had one, but that didn't work out well because it was an echo. So we're still exploring and experimenting and researching and uh, we'll see. So far, it's been very good, knock on wood. 
I have the feeling that this this virus is terrible. It is as it is and how just de destroying it is for so many things going on right now, culture and, and all, 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 all things, all facets of life. There are some good things about it, which is bringing people together on a scale like, I mean, look at us on the Horn Hangouts tonight. There's people watching literally from all over the world. And also I think it's bringing us te technology wise so far so quickly, because I mean, who would have thought that you would have spent your time teaching online all day, every day? I mean, that, that's really amazing. No, and on a more serious note, we have a dear neighbor of ours who's a doctor here at the hospital. And then from him and from his wife, we hear the terrible stories there. You know, it's like in the middle of a, a war, it's on the front and they are really putting up a fantastic fight. So I, I can't say enough, you know, how much I admire their work and how much they are um, to be admired in these difficult times. Uh, it's like living in a bubble, even if we have our own difficulties, not being to travel and so on, many concerts canceled and so on. It's nothing in comparison to what they do and everybody else who keeps this uh, uh, so-called normal life going on. Yeah. Dinka, for, for those of you who've joined, I mean, every horn player who's joined in today knows exactly who Radovan, Radovan is. He's one of our horn gods, Radovan, one of my favorite players in the entire world. Um, Dinka is all, yours too. Well, that's good. You're not prejudiced at all there. <laughs> Dinka is a, um, a wonderful performance coach. And how would you describe what you do, Dinka, exactly? Well, I'm a psychologist and psychotherapist, but I uh, work with musicians um, on their mental skills, thinking that this is also one important part of your job. So uh, just trying to make them more secure, more stable in what they are doing, uh, working on their self-confidence and um, yeah, a mental stability, mental power that they need on the stage. That's, I, I, ha I have a secret for all of you. Well, it's not such a secret anymore. I have worked a lot with Dinka and without her, I probably would have not set foot on the stage on many occasions. <laughs> it's really true. Um, through you, Dinka, I learned how important it is to take care of all the mental side of the playing just as much as you, maybe not as much, I've never managed to, to balance it out that much, but you have to practice. I learned from you, you have to practice it like you practice your horn. <laughs> That's true. And that's that's easy with the musicians. When when you say you can practice it, then they immediately do it. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we understand what practice is. You understand um, what practice is. <laughs> We've done two great horn hangouts with you about all the way you teach and, and there's really fantastic information out there um, about what you suggested, even what you should eat. I remember you telling me grapefruit juice is really good to drink. <laughs> and what vitamins to take and and I mean really I, I learned a lot not not just about the mental side but also the body side you know about how to take care of your body as well it's like you know you 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 you've studied with sports um, doctors haven't you yeah I did uh, I studied sports psychology and then I understood also how it's really connected body and mind and uh, how we need also all these aspects of our lives. And uh, being a musician is, uh, I always say, it's a lifestyle. It's not only a profession. And uh, take the whole personality, the whole day, what you do, how you think, how you work, and uh, then you have a good results. <laughs> so it's you mentioned you mentioned something really important on it was our horn party last Friday. If any of you haven't seen the horn party, please go back and watch it on YouTube. It was the most fantastic party, wasn't it? Gail Williams has just joined us. So Gail is there. Hi, Gail. Lovely to see you. Um, we had a fantastic time at the party and we didn't have time to say very much each of us because everyone they were showing hamsters and dogs and it was really cool but you i asked you how to keep our motivation up and what you would recommend in these times because it's especially if you're on your own in this isolation and in this in this lockdown and we musicians especially horn players we're such a gregarious lot we need to be with other people you know that's that's what we do that's what we love and you said something really fantastic you said do your routine do your practice can you just can you just uh, um Tell us yeah, that all again, just for the people that didn't hear it. Yeah, it's a very important part of, of, of this isolation. Um, I, I heard from uh, from our children, I heard like um, 
their friends are just uh, all day in pajamas, uh, sleeping during the day, you know, all these things. And uh, after a while, this is really deadly. Um, it's, it's something that, that really, it's not helpful. So we all need a little bit relaxation and all these things, but keeping the routine is a very important part of uh, feeling in control because the times are so uncertain and uh, it's not predictable how long it will take and how it will go all together. So uh, this insecurity is, is deadly and uh, it's losing of control of your, uh, of your life somehow. And uh, we need to keep this control. So if we plan what we will do tomorrow, if we keep our habits, if we keep our routine, your practicing, um, if you put in your life now the things you never had time to do it, and uh, now you can some, I don't know, exercise. Spend time with your husband. <laughs> Spend time with your husband, reading uh, and things like that, uh, but planning it. So uh, the most important thing about it is to have a control in your life when everything is lack of control, yeah. actually. Yeah. And, and that's the most important part of it. That's that's why yeah. I said keep it Can and plan it fantastic advice and this is why we've kept the horn hangouts going all week because because it sort of gives us also it gives me as well it helps me to have something to plan for and it, it's a lot more work than you realize it's sort of it's not just sort of turning on the computer at 10 minutes to nine it's a it's a lot but um radovan back to you there's you spent all day there's been some actually not so nice things happening um that we wanted to we felt we, we needed to mention um one thing was the terrible um earthquake that you had in your in your hometown Yes, uh, that was about a week ago. There was a major earthquake in Zagreb, and uh, you know there was so much bad news about the virus that that somehow didn't get noticed as much. Um, luckily, it was a Sunday morning, very early, 6.23 uh, in the morning, so people weren't out and about, and uh, that probably explains why the casualties, I think there was only one person who, who had died um, as a, a result of this. But there was major damage, and this is something that it's going to take a long time to repair, especially in the center of the city, uh, buildings that are very dear to our heart, uh, the university building where the Ninka studied law, also the concert hall of the Croatian Music uh, Society, where I played many concerts, and which is probably the best chamber music hall in town, has been really damaged. So oh, it's very sad yeah. to see those things. and. Um, and of course, we were worried about our loved ones and my father as well. We just uh, someone, yeah. someone, oh. right in the middle of the earth, someone hey. joined us to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were trying to be all serious, and it is terrible to talk about. But now we've got one of Radaban's best friends joining in, Tim Jones and his wife Joe. Hey, Joe, lovely to see you. Just hello, to say I, hello. Am I allowed to um, gate crash a horn hangout? Of Absolutely. course, we have even cellists who are watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. I'm rather you... bad. We only do things uh, with our wives, don't we, Tim? <laughs> we always do. I was just remembering as I was coming on here, just to remind us that the last time, certainly in the in the northern hemisphere, we had a a lockdown was um, because we couldn't fly anywhere. Right. Which is it, 10 years ago. So we were last time we had lockdown, we spent it all together. So we miss you. Natural disasters save our marriage, you see. <laughs> 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 well, they're testing out. You've got two young children at home who are driving us nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't start that with Dinka. Dinka's so sad that her children have left how home. Oh, no, you still got one there, haven't you? Uh, we have two at home. Two. Now. How you many are there all together? Six. Yeah. Gosh. <sighs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. It's lovely. Later during the week, and one is in Vienna, one is in New York, so they're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's good. It's well, well done, Tim. Well done for getting on the Horn Hangouts. I'm so impressed. I managed, managed to get on. Yeah, I'm really impressed. And you're invited to Julie Landsman's birthday party on Friday. Yeah, I will yeah. Come on, I'll come on Friday. 
I'll Brilliant. Joe, to you're it. invited too. Bring the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's got the wine. There's the wine. <laughs> oh, 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 very good. Very good. We've just got to sort out the uniform. <laughs> I'm not right. No, I, I, I'm sorry. T I have got a T-shirt. I have got a T-shirt. I know you do. But I've got two. One from New York and one from when, uh, the one from LA one and one from when I was in okay. Berlin recently. Well, so I could borrow one then. Sure, borrow one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely to see you. I just wanted, I just wanted to surprise Dink and Radovan with one of their. Thank you. Lovely. Oh. Well, we love you all. Yes, love to all Green of you. Short. <laughs> lovely um, to see you. See you on Friday. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Oh, I've got to get out of that. Hang on. Oh, I've got to get out of it yet. I'm at least. There we go. That was Timothy Jones, principal horn of the London Symphony Orchestra. I was a bit worried when he started off sideways. <laughs> Oh, they're so sweet. I just wanted, this is the best thing about the technology of today. You know, people can dial in and dial out. It's great. That's fantastic. But, sorry, Radovan, you were talking about the earthquake. I do, we've got lots of horn questions coming in, so we need to get to those as well. But before we get to that, I just wanted to say my absolute condolences about Penderecki because he was a very good friend of yours and he died, was it yesterday? Day before, yesterday. Um, Sunday, yes. Sunday. And and especially because you were just about to perform with him. Yeah, we were. We, we woke up to the bad news that he passed away, and uh, we were supposed to be performing in Asia later this year, in end of April and beginning of May, in both Malaysia and Singapore. Unfortunately, that happened. Did not happen. But um, I was telling my family all the beautiful memories and and uh, souvenirs that we had from our time together, and I'm eternally grateful for the music that he has um, given us, the, the concerto, the solo piece, and the success, which we came in 20 years ago. So he was a great human being, a fantastic artist, and one of the greatest composers of all time. How is his horn writing? I mean, we've played it in the orchestra. Um, it's quite lush, you know, and he seems to understand the horn quite well. Yes. Oh, very well. well. The music is, you know, uh, characterized by beauty and lyricism, especially the latter part of his uh, uh, career, and uh, also with a sense of humor. I think all of these things can come through uh, uh, on the horn, many colors and so on. And, and you know, he wrote an incredible avant-garde music at the beginning of his career. So it's so versatile and uh, fantastic human being. So uh, our heart goes out to his family and to his life as yet. Yeah, absolutely. And if you can have a listen to his horn concerto, is your vi your violin? He, it's a piece for violin and horn, a violin and horn double concerto. The horn concerto it, it carries the name Winter Reise, the winter uh, winter voyage, uh, the winter. Um, but it's not unconnected to to Schubert. I think it's even on YouTube. So yeah, have a look out. Maybe maybe some of you can um, can post the link, and um, and we'll have that and and think about him. May I? Um, ask some questions from the online audience. Thank Here you. we go. This is fantastic. Um, oh yeah, uh, Gustavo, I think he's a student of yours. He said we play the Penderecki Concerto in Badajoz, Badajoz with Radovan. Badajoz, Badajoz, yes, yes, in Spain, yes. Badajoz, yeah. hola Gustavo. Um, greetings from Lithuania, from Cal Carolina, from Vilnius. Um, yeah, Andrew Bain is watching. Good, good on, uh, good eye, Andrew. Um, Jason Friedman has a question for you, Radovan. When preparing for a big concert, what does your preparation timeline look look like? How do you organize pra practicing, listening, st uh, score study, and mental practice? That's... Oh, yes, that's I wish I was as organized to actually have that ideal uh, preparation. But since uh, uh, we all teach and travel a lot, uh, you have to make the best uh, of the short time that, that we stay uh, uh, with. That that means simply that um, it will be short, concentrated uh, sessions. If it's uh, old repertoire, if it's something new, obviously it will take more time. But uh, taking opportunity of every three minutes, if you're on a train or on a plane, look at the score, listen to music, and get acquainted with it and everything and then uh, even sometimes teaching and going through uh, the repertoire of my students i wish i were as organized as the question has suggested but unfortunately <laughs> in, in the real world you just make the best out of it and you try to, to start as early 
And uh, upon, on that note, uh, I think I never w went on the stage having a feeling that now I'm prepared. I always think I should have practiced more. But Dinka knows more about these things. We are a little <laughs> crazy. Dinka, is there a ratio that we could go by? You know, horn practice, mental practice. Uh, it, is it good to visualize? I mean, I'm asking you questions that I know the answer to because we worked on them. But, uh, <laughs> but this visualization process, is there a ratio of what you would recommend? Well, there is something I, I, I try. I'm also learning through my job. I'm learning all the time something new. Um, and I realized, you know, uh, you have so much to do, like Radovan said, traveling, playing, uh, new pieces, uh, and, and all these things, and teaching. And, um, and the idea that you can have everyday time for meditation or for your practicing your mental skills or something like this, it's, it's just unrealistic, unrealistic yeah. yeah. So uh, what I, in the meantime, suggest is, uh, again, about control, uh, to just do some exercises through the day, just randomly, uh, just to have the feeling I can control it. Meaning it doesn't need to be uh, connected even with, with the playing or with the music, but I don't know, when you start to be angry or when you start the negative thoughts about anything, then to to learn, okay, I can stop it. I can change it into what do I want? What is the next step I want to do? How I want to do it? And and this is actually how we practice in a like small uh, uh, dosages, Portion. <laughs> portions, Portion, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, our mental skills. That's, that's the way actually to do it. So yeah. Yeah, I, the, your, your, so it's sort of like almost a mantra. I must say that really helped me just now with the concerto that I, I played in the recording in Cuba because I had every practicing preparing, but because as a, as a tutti shrine, as a member of the section, I wasn't used to playing solo anymore. So these thoughts would come in. I was practicing, it would be going quite well. But then these thoughts would come in. Can you still do this? You haven't played a concerto for a long time. And I remember you saying to me, replace those thoughts immediately. So yeah. it's sort of like you can do it while you're practicing the horn. You can Absolutely. also be replacing these thoughts. Do you do that, yeah. Radovan, or do you even get nervous? No, I do get nervous, except now uh, I remember I've heard a number of Inca's lectures. And when she tells me that we are, you know, doing auto sabotage and that this voice of doubt, uh, you know, comes to us, uh, it's not that you can just uh, uh, think it away but I kind of try to accept it as the first step on the way. And that's usually being his advice. So I, I tell my students and I try to say myself, although it always feels scarier than when you're telling somebody else about it. Do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> yes, um, um, Justin in Toronto and Canada asks, any books on performance prep anxiety? Are there any, any ones we should have at home, Dinka? Ah. I just found recently something uh, which I found really good. Okay, yeah? I'm gonna I'm it's gonna order that straight away. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, there is not so many books uh, about it. Uh, some I didn't find helpful, and uh, but this one I I really liked. It's it's very uh, practical, and okay. uh, a lot Can of exercise. In the chat to it, um, Devon. I know you're watching. Can you find a link for that? That would be great. I'm a musician by Vanessa Cornett. Okay, great. Thank you for that. There's also some good YouTube um, videos. You said the one about self-compassion was very useful. You remember? I, I found that very very useful because how many of us do you do this, Radovan? Do you try? I mean, you just feel yourself sort of whipping yourself with the back, saying, "God, that's not good enough," and I've got to be better and it's like you said accepting it you know sort of accepting that you're okay i'm nervous okay i know you i know that voice yeah. <laughs> going to be with yourself like you would to your best friend you know uh, benevolent well-meaning mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's really so important um matthew hyslip asked radovan you have the greatest horn sound out there here here who are your horn sound influences well, I used to listen to Barry Tuckwell a lot, who just passed also recently. So uh, that was uh, another sad event for the whole world, whole, uh, for the horn world. Um, I think singers increasingly so, the human voice, something that- Do you have any favorites? Sorry? Tenor or soprano? 
or bass? Oh, the voices, all sorts of voices, because it comes so, so you know, straight from the soul. And you see uh, people touched by the human voice. So the, the closer we get to the uh, emulating the human voice, I think the better. Yeah. Whether yeah. with run or without. I totally agree. Horn playing is like is like singing. You know, I feel we 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 have to be so free here, and and it's yeah. No, I agree. Um, sometimes I I I have students come and play a Mozart horn concerto. You know, and you know that very first page. Sometimes that very first page is the decision between most of the time of whether you get a job or or not. And 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 so you have to show everything you can show on the first page. And I say, well, which Mozart arias do you enjoy listening to? And you wouldn't believe. Well, you know how often they go like, hmm. Well, not quite sure. You can't play Mozart if you don't know his arias. You know. Very much so. Very much so. Anyway, sorry, I'm saying too much. It's your hangout. No, 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 no. no. You're absolutely right. Uh, Sarah, can I ask you a question? I mentioned I would ask you a question. It's also about motivation. We admire your program and your engagement for this because you bring the community together, you, speak, you keep the spirits high, the mor morale high in these difficult times. So how do you motivate yourself? Where do you find the energy, the drive, the direction, the ideas? Tell us about that. Well, it's your hangout, Radovan, but on your hangout, <laughs> you're <laughs> Well, I think the secret is really from my bottom of my heart i love what i do and and i think you can't fake that you can't fake being enthusiastic you can't fake loving what you do some people probably can i mean if, if they get paid a lot of money to do it then i'm sure people are practiced in it but i can't fake it i i literally love it i adore the communication part i love playing the horn yeah. but i love the communication part and and for me in this this day i mean especially now but since we started the horn hangouts um, and you were our very first one, Radovan. You were our very first one. No, I think um, it's wonderful, and, and communication is the is the key word, as you said, whether through music or verbally, as you do it. So it's fantastic. Yeah, but it's it, of together. course there are days. You know, you wake up and you're like, and, and Dink has seen me in states of of agitation that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Um, <laughs> and 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 of course we all have those sides to us. But I think when there's deep down a total love and passion for what you do and also a passion to communicate that for others. I was the loneliest horn player ever when I was studying. I was not a happy person when I was studying, um, uh, when I went to music college and I never want any other horn player to have to go through that. And if I'd had the horn hangers, it would have been great. So there's the motivation. I think just basically love what you do and believe, believe that there, you know, that the communication part is, is I hope worth you realize it. Many people you're making happy through no. this fantastic skill of yours. Well, they're happy. Thank you. That means a lot to me, but they're happy to see you today. It's your hangout. So it's your turn as, for some. As we were thinking about, you know, uh, I, I suggested also to Dinka that maybe we say a few words on how to go through these tough times. I was thinking also what we uh, musicians can try and do. And um, I want to mention the digital concert hall of your orchestra, which is doing a fantastic job and which allowed everybody to watch in for free for a month, you know, so for another fun. month, for one more month, they've for just one more month. Fantastic. Yeah, one more month. And I've, I've seen I get mails from the Paris Opera and from uh, probably the Metropolitan Opera as well. We had a concert in Iceland also, I think, last year in the autumn. And they're going to be or I think they were already uh, broadcasting that again. So it's wonderful. Everybody is trying to keep, you know, entertained and alive and, and, and not lose the contact with the culture, music, arts that, that we need so badly. Uh, we were in Sarajevo some many years ago after the, the, the war in, in Bosnia and Dinka was asking a, a person in the theater, how did you go, you know, through these difficult times and how did you stay sane? And, and, she, and the person said, the actors and the musicians would keep coming to the to the opera building and they were trying to maintain some kind of routine we were talking about the schedule the routine the the, the um, nor sense of normalcy and how life-saving that was and also not mm -hmm. to go crazy at those times mm -hmm. so there are even worse situations i mean it's not inspiring to talk about them but uh you can learn from those difficult times yeah, here, here, absolutely. So, Dinka, we are allowed to go online and and fall into the Facebook hole or or Instagram or talk TikTok or not too oh. much. Okay. <laughs> Says the lady who made me put my iPhone out of my bedroom when I went to sleep. 
<laughs> because you know that one wake up same oh, here, yeah. same here. <laughs> you too. glad to hear it um, if, if, if i may say something i i was listening to uh creation radio after this uh, earthquake so we had earthquake and corona at the same time yeah. and uh so people were on one hand at home in, in self-isolation, the other hand, they were scared and, and panicking. And uh, I mean, the, the earth is still um, shaking every day, yeah. uh, all these oh, days. Wow. After. Uh, Tremors, yes. And uh, so it's a, a terrible. And, and then uh, something that this uh, psychologist said, people don't know how to be with themselves. And, uh, and this is something uh, why I, I told you, put your phone out of, <laughs> out of your bedroom. We need this time to be with ourselves. So uh, this is what I wish everybody, uh, not being afraid of that. So it's wonderful. We do need each other. We do need this communication. It's life-saving. But we also need this time for ourselves. So let's do that now very very good advice someone said actually i think it was stephen fry said if you can't live with yourself then no one else can live with you <laughs> <That's it. laughs> come back to the to the important mm -hmm. values in life you know whether yeah. it's family and we believe in education and the arts and so on so read the books that you want always wanted to read and then uh, now the, now's the time to do those kind of things are you doing that what are you guys reading right now I'm reading something on psychology. I'm also reading something on Giovanni Puzzi, a horn player who worked in uh, both in Paris and later on in Britain. He's very famous. He was an impresario and so on. This is a PhD thesis, and uh, we will go into some of his pieces, the virtuoso of the early 19th century. Um, I'm also reading uh, what, what comes my way through recommendations of friends. There's an article I'd like to mention by the Israeli philosopher you all, uh, Noah Harari, who, whose uh, books Dinka appreciates much. And it's an article in the Financial Times called The World After Corona. Uh, just also, uh, you know, because everybody is dealing with fear now and, and we shouldn't. That's in the own. Financial Times. Sorry, that's in the Financial yes. Times. Financial Devin, Times. can you post the link to that too, please? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. The World After Corona by Yuval Noah Harari. And he talks about, you know, how we should uh, also try to not forget that it's time to have citizen empowerment uh, rather than surveillance and uh, this global sub solidarity that we also feel as musicians instead of uh, isolationism especially in national isolationism because not everything that's going on now and we don't want power abuse in this situation now yeah absolutely not we don't want anyone using it to get re-elected right <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yes, but let's not get into politics. It's a horn hangout. Um, um, Jen Montone is watching. Jen, how's Bamster the hamster? <laughs> that was such a great moment. Jen at the end of the party with a disco light in one hand and a hamster in a horn hangout mug in the other. I just absolutely love that. Um, oh, good. Devon's just posted the, the link to the Financial Times article. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, got that. Um, so... Oh, that's really, you're going to love the chat in here. Everyone is really, we're in a quite philosophical, philosophical, the, the, philo, philosophical mood tonight. Gosh. Um, right. Um, yeah. Francis asks, how do you deal with stress before a concert? Um, what are the best ways to stay calm before performing Radovan? Yeah. Again, I've learned uh, a lot from, from Dinka. Uh, she explains that there are people who naturally deal pretty well with this and they shouldn't be changing anything. Then there's a group of our, us who are dealing okay, but we can learn uh, to do things better. And uh, I learned, for instance, when I get uh, cold, sweaty hands and things like that, that I need to move, uh, uh, you know, not, not dance, but to stretch, move. That's not really stretch. interesting. You get yes. cold, sweaty hands before you, you, oh, yeah. you play. And oh, moving very Yes, I just need to move and uh, stay active, not 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 be in, in the chair and try to meditate or anything like that, because it doesn't work. So I just need to move, and and I uh, thank Dinka for the good advice, and I'm trying to apply that. And and whether it works or not, it's just the conviction. Also, you know, I'm doing what is is right, and I know it's going to work. And the more often it works, and then sometimes it catches you by surprise. 
I usually don't have a dry mouth, but sometimes it happened last time I was in a concert. I wasn't expecting it. Boom. And so I was thinking, wow, that's interesting. So Not what do you do? It. You bite on it? Bite through it. You fight through it. Your <laughs> tongue, you do everything. You blow like crazy. <laughs> you ignore the little mistakes that you make and you keep on uh, riding the wild horse. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about um, about food on the Hangouts yesterday um, with Stefan and um, and saying, you know, bananas are good, a cheese sandwich. Mary Louisa Neunecker always recommends a cheese sandwich. Um, no peanuts before a, before a concert. Dinka, what, what else would you recommend? Well, I, 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 I try to tell people to drink enough, not wine, but water. <laughs> <laughs> uh and and not exactly before the concert but but really that day when the concert is in the evening really trying to to keep on drinking all the time so one part of having dry mouth is also not enough drinking during the day yes. uh so so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so i'm sorry to say this on live online but i found you've got to be really careful especially as a soloist okay radovan you're on stage for 20 minutes and then you go but as an orchestral musician if i drink too much before a concert already if i need to pee in the first movement of a mala symphony i'm in trouble Mm -hmm. That's why I'm telling. That's why I'm saying during the day, not before the concert. So that's important. So to keep uh, uh, the body hydrated through the day. Uh, so thinking in advance. That's that's a really a, one important thing to do. Okay. What else? What can we eat in your wise opinion? Expert well, opinion? there are uh, yeah, uh, there are things that uh, calms you down or or. Keeps you so it's also important uh, to know, uh, like Radovan mentioned now, uh, the people who are with a high adrenaline and they are very excited and they, they need something to calm down. So that's the banana thing, for example. Yeah, breathing, yeah? Exercises. Uh, breathing exercises and things like that. Uh, and then there are people who are uh, after they are so excited, then then this noradrenaline comes, yeah. and then they actually are tired. Then you mm. need something to to um, wake you up. Vitamin C in all possible uh, uh, variations, like lemonade, the juices, uh, whatever, or even vitamin C. Uh, what about these, the powders? Uh, you can drink vitamin C yeah, or something, something like that. So but it's it's really. Or sorry. this is for the people with the higher the, the low adrenaline. They need it, not the people with the higher adrenaline. Yeah. So, so if you feel if you feel excited and and more shaky and things like that, then the things that calms you down, like banana, cheese, uh, uh, things like that. Yeah, um, proteins as well. It's good. Are we allowed to talk but, about cats? What? Cats. C -C oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you shouldn't be doing. C A T S. Cats. Coffee, okay. All tobacco and sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, and sugar. They are all really bad before concerts. It doesn't matter what you're except I don't know my 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 ex colleague Fergus McWilliam, he had to have a coffee before he went on stage. He just had to. Um actually the, the thing with a coffee is unfortunately it, it really keeps you but for a short time. So it's good maybe for another one, like you said, when he plays 15 or 20 minutes, but mm -hmm. to to play two, three hours long uh, concerts, uh, it's not good because after 20 minutes, you start to be very tired. I remember, That's I remember Baron Boym telling me once, um, he said we were, we were, <laughs> we were doing Rheingold um, in the, in the Staatsoper and you know, Rheingold goes for two hours, 40 minutes without the break. And Baron Boym said after one performance, oh man, that was a really tough one. He said by the eighth horn solo, he realized that he had to pee. <laughs> And the eighth horn solo comes after like two minutes. <laughs> oh, look! Yes, coffee. So I don't, right. I don't know the rules either. This is coffee. You, you have cool. That's coffee at this time of night? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We, we, are, we are creations, yeah. Um, may, Christopher, may I say, yes, please, please, please. May I say one wonderful sentence from Baden Boyne when, when you mention him, okay? Uh, he was talking with our son who said, oh, wow, you need, a, they were doing Oberon over here. 
and uh, and I even said, oh, you need a really good horn player at the beginning. Uh, uh, and uh, and then Barenboim said, you know who is a really good horn player? It's not a horn player who never makes a mistake, but it's a horn player who can play like a god after he made a mistake. <laughs> That's an amazing observation. That is so true. <laughs> How do we, oh. how do you do that? If you, I've never heard you split the crap out of anything. Oh, pardon. Beep. But um, if you do make a mistake, which you didn't like, how do you gather yourself afterwards? Um, I don't have a plan for it. I just remember hearing a, uh, Oleg, a trumpet a player who said that you have to be creative in trying to imagine that things went well and then just stay on that track. Imagine your ideal uh, interpretation, your ideal concert and then just keep on going like you would in a recording session you can always back go back and fix it later but don't spoil the whole thing musically yeah you can go back and fix it later but like a Bruckner 4 beginning you know you can't really fix that if you've yeah well, I split, I split, uh, pretty much the beginning of things Strauss 1 <laughs> and Britain Serenade and that's a challenge it is a challenge to go on yeah that's true Radovan what's harder I mean I remember calling you when the Berlin Phil needed Stefan was sick at the last minute and I remember calling you you're like are you crazy I can't play that that's way too hard but and I laughed so much because you play the hardest horn concertos and all this stuff written for you and you you said playing first horn was just was just hard it's just a different, different thing. Like you said, now when you were preparing for the concerto, um, I remember when uh, I left the orchestra and it, it's a change that needs to happen in the head. Talking of, of uh, books, we know the uh, book of uh, Inner Game of Tennis also. Mm -hmm. uh, I read uh, at the time when I was 28 and left the orchestra. So it's the change that is here. It's not more difficult or less difficult or easier and so on. It's just a different kind of uh, thing. So I think that we need to get into uh, that uh, mode and mindset, and then it works. The mindful yeah. musician. I'm not share of, of the orchestra, but I wouldn't dare doing an important concert just like that. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so humble. It's unbelievable, really. Um, Radovan, the, um, the, the mouthpiece question has come. We're allowed to ask mouthpiece questions because it's the horn hangout. What horn and mouthpiece do you use? It's from oh. Sveta. I use uh, I use a, a Paxman uh, double horn uh, 20M and I've been using it for 38 uh, years now. And uh, recently also I like the, the Breeze horn that I tried out in China in Tianjin on um, several occasions and I own one. And I have some other horns which I use occasionally. The mouthpiece is a uh, custom made uh, Bruno Tilts. And since as a student, I played a, a French made instrument, a Selmer with piston valves, uh, they had a different uh, Selmer mouthpiece. So it was a little bit of a copy of that with some adjustments. And that's what I, again, I've been using that for almost 40 years now. When you say a custom made tilts, what's important for you? Oh, um, I think it's quite a wide uh, rim which is good for endurance. It's not necessarily good for sound quality. I'm not happy recommending the mouthpiece to too many people because it's, I think, difficult to play. It has quite a deep cup and it has a small bore. So all of those things don't make playing, let's say, in the high range necessarily easier. But since I do like the sound, I stick to it and I don't believe in fixing problems by changing mouthpieces. Uh, only in extreme cases, so that's that's <laughs> how I see it. Here, here. I mean, I know there's mouthpiece gurus out there that can find exactly the right hundredth millionth of a of a, of a, of a, of a millimeter to to make your playing as great as it can. But it's I think the mouthpiece works. When you were studying, you didn't have the choice. You know, we didn't have all different mouthpieces, and our teacher who studied in Paris himself he regretted not being able to have this collection of mouthpieces to suit everybody's needs but he simply didn't have them and you had to deal with, with what you had yeah no, absolutely um i i don't usually manage to get the facebook questions as well as the other uh, the website questions but one has just popped up that i really would like to ask because i think it affects all of us at this time from filippo tramontana he says a question for both of you during this period of low activity and maybe we don't have rooms with a good acoustic what horn elements do you recommend to focus on first 
which is which is that that's the half the question the other half is dinka you talked about visualization could be useful especially now to try and visualize themselves in playing a concert during practice so that that's quite i would ask for some tips who for someone who is has difficulties in visualization so that that's two things i think it's a really great great thing one if you can't really concentrate on the sound i mean here i'm going crazy my my i'm you know i live on the top floor the roofs are uh, low i know all my neighbors are home all day um you know you can't i can't really make an amazingly beautiful sound in here or play as loud as i want um and then would it help to stand up and visualize myself playing a concert what do you think both what do you both think of that i just wanted to say that sometimes uh, i played concerts and because i had something up coming up a uh, new repertoire i had to actually walk out of the concert and practice during the second half while the orchestra was still playing their symphony and in those uh, occasions i i noticed i sounded okay in the hall but now I sound terrible in the dressing room. So I thought I'm not playing differently, and yet it is, it is the feeling of a small room. So that's an important thing to know that a bad sound in a dry, small room is not necessarily a bad sound in a great concert hall. So that's just experience, yeah? Secondly, trying to, you said visualize, but also imagine the most beautiful sound and play as if you were in a, in a big space. So things like that, just from my side, but you probably have also learned yeah. some things. Well, I work a lot with this creative visualizations and, and all these things. And uh, I usually start with uh, really uh, train train the musicians to, uh, to imagine that now they are coming, that they are bowing and they are seeing this audience. And so uh, really going into, into this feeling of it. And, and we can do it. I mean, if, if, I, if I start to talk about something beautiful, like, oh, you know, last Christmas, it was so beautiful. And then everybody starts to, huh. So, <laughs> uh, so we, are, we are really, uh, um, we have this possibility and we can use it a lot to yeah. imagine uh, the situation, imagine the atmosphere, imagine what you can see, what you can hear and how you can feel. And then go for it to really, produce the sound you want to produce that's this it this is quite I a just... good time now when we're all at home you know to sort of work on that quietly and calmly when we're not when we haven't got all this crazy everyday life of rushing around from appointment to appointment you know we we do have the time to actually sit and do this visualization while we're practicing i think i'm going to do a bit more of that so thank you thank you for that is a time when we could do recordings except it's too late to organize it but uh, we can do recordings for ourselves i hear my students who are doing a fantastic job and they're really motivated and really practicing hard so i thank them for their attitude also not only for the fantastic results but uh, now i get to hear them the way a sound engineer hears you in a studio you know and i start complaining about the same things that the attacks are too hard that we should use more, you know, softer attacks and more air and things, those kind of things. Where else, as the small mistakes, whether it's intonation, whether it's a fluff note here or there, don't matter so much. So it's the general impression that we get. And that's maybe not a bad thing. So I actually find myself letting them play more and just commenting more positive. And like you said, when they've done something well, then concentrating on what they've done well and even asking them what they did well so that we are in this positive mode. No, not be picky because it's not the time to do that, not on tape when you can't really hear what's going on in the room. That's that's really, really great advice. So there is something positive coming out of this time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have to believe that there is, yes. Absolutely. I've got two little questions and then I must, you actually have to get, you, you two are allowed to go to bed. I don't know how it is. 10 to 11, oh my goodness. It's <laughs> a few more questions though, just because everyone is really loving this hangout. They um, Thank you for your feedback on, on the website and also on Facebook. People are, are really loving it. I am. Um, so is uh, Radovan a quick one? What do you have? It always happens. Landon says, do you have a favorite piece of repert solo horn repertoire to play? Or does it change well, weekly? To what I recommend to my students to, to, to practice that uh, I've been mentioning that, you know, the Brahms Trio, or the Britain Serenade, those are the pieces that I love playing. And some uh, pieces that I that I have been rarely uh, um, maybe practiced or performed. Uh, also, I come back to Maestro Penderecki and we're working on his concerto and, and other things. So uh, there's not only one composer, like uh, who was it? Gail who said that, uh, Gail Williams said that the other day. There's not just one. 
There are yeah, many. absolutely. Um, a quick question back to what we said about the dry mouth. Um, now, where was it? I think they're coming in so quickly now. I can hardly, I can hardly see them. What can we do? A Carolina says sometimes during the concert the mouth dries. What can we do about it in the concert itself? Dinko, you mentioned during the day drinking as much as you can. Is there any other little tip if it happens in the concert? As stupid as it is, a visualization of of a, a lemon or something like this is actually helps. I, I know it sounds <laughs> stupid, but, but actually it does help. <laughs> so. If I may add, uh, just uh, it's a terrible feeling, as we know, uh, in the middle of the concert to have a dry mouth. It's scary. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's also important, maybe through a recording or listening to a colleague. Uh, who you know suffers from the same thing. And just knowing from experience that out, out there, we didn't notice. Maybe we noticed that something is a little different, but it's not a catastrophe and they continue and they make more music. So just concentrate on what is essential. Try to remember the musical ideas that lead you through the piece, not ignoring what's happening because Dinka always explains the more you ignore it, the stronger the symptoms become. So yes, I have a dry mouth, but I'm continue going to try for my best possible sound, best legato, tempo, whatever it is. You want to do that and keep on going. And then hopefully it will go away. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Yeah, no, fantastic, fantastic. I agree. <laughs> Ignoring it makes it worse. <laughs> I learned that from you. Acknowledge it, acknowledge it and keep on going. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for all of these. I mean, there's people call, really writing in from everywhere. And also what I love is they're seeing each other in the chat and greeting each other from Toronto to Germany to Auckland to, I mean, it's really quite incredible. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It, it's really wonderful. Um, Radovan and Dinka, it's, it's late here, so I'm going to let you guys go. Who knows how long these, um, these, this lockdown is going to go on for, but I would love to have you back at some time, if you, if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, we're going to see each other on Friday night at Julie's party. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And we're going to, um, tomorrow night, Stefan's back. And on Thursday, Gail Williams is joining us, which is great. Oh, great. Right. Because so many people are asking about air and blowing and, and, and Gail is so she's tiny, but she's got it completely sus. She's, she knows right. what's going on. <laughs> yeah, we were in New York uh, recently at Cornell University, so we thought of her. And I her admire name, her so much. Her name oh. was very good mentioned for all the colleagues that came. I had a little master class and they are all so proud of her. Oh. She's amazing. I wonder if Handsome Tim's still there. Handsome Tim, are you still there? Handsome Tim. There he is. <laughs> Hello. Still here. Still awake. <laughs> is everything still all right on Facebook? It suddenly froze on mine, but is that is everything oh, all right? I'm sure it's fine. Nothing ever goes I'm wrong sure on a horn hangout. I, yeah. I just saw the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there. But do you think we can do we could do Dinka, Dinka and Radovan selfie? Yeah, we should do a selfie. That's very important. Yeah, can we do a selfie? Um, because this is something that we um, um, that we do every day, as you saw on the you saw the one we did of everybody. But I'm sure people are are dying to have a selfie with you guys. And because Tim and I are here, we're just going to smile as well. Okay. Yeah. So can we do that? Are you guys ready for the selfie moment? What do we do? Yeah, what do we do? Nothing. <laughs> That's all. You look you look fine, right? Everyone ready? Here, handsome Tim. He can't get any yeah, can ready. anyone get more handsome than him? <laughs> okay, you've had enough notice. Here we go. Okay, One, two, three, selfie time. Yay! <laughs> Got your best smiles on. Great. Perfect. Thumbs up. Thank you. So we'll see. We'll see what comes. We've had some wonderful ones with all sorts of animals, with with Sebastian the guinea pig, with Africa the budgie, um, with with somebody's horses, um, Maggie's horses. It's been really, yeah, impressive. So, how, what do you think of that, Tim? Fantastic. It's great to wake up to such wisdom. I think there's lots of lots of really good stuff there, and the chat was really going off. So thanks everyone yeah, who has been watching on Facebook and the website. Your we will we will see all your questions and all your all your comments and i will i will make sure that the ones we didn't get to that we will hopefully get next get to next time we have these two amazing people two of my favorite people thank you so much radovan and dinka thank you, thank you for making it possible we appreciate your efforts thank you for wearing the t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> good night from berlin 
Good night. night. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having Good us Good night. Here. Bye to all of you. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, 10 p.m. Berlin time, same time as today, back with Stefan Dorr, then Gail Williams on Thursday, and then Julie Landsman's birthday party on Friday. <laughs> See you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Bye. 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 Stay, Stay healthy. healthy. <laughs>